on to the, another Bucknerverse production from high atop Mount Manitoba, the most important mountain in all of the prairies. Huh? Didn't know that existed, but it does. Not in Hall of Fame.com presents. How the hell did this go number one? And we've got one that was chosen by not myself, Kirk Buckner, the owner, the operator of NotInHallOfFame.com. See, I forgot to do my opening plugs there, so I have to remember to do that. Uh, and the fictitious, that yeah, thank you. The kind of crowbar barred it more, but anyway, the fictitious athlete hall of fame, the fictitious rock and roll hall of fame, and the United States Athletic Hall of Fame. Vote now, vote off at www.notinhalloffame.com forward slash USA. And with me is Andrea Tessman and Brad Nelson, who picked this one. You went all Canada on us. Got to represent, eh? Yeah, and well, there's nothing more Canadian than picking a Gordon. Gord yeah. is a very Canadian name. Gord, Gordo? You know, I mean, I'm kind of sad that the Gord father never had a number one hit because I would have picked it already. Yeah, doing some tragically hip. Oh, Hmm. Actually, maybe I should maybe I should do an, an impression of uh, maybe Gord Downey doing Rihanna. Nah, nah, that's I'll save that for later. <laughs> do do some mirror work on that one, man. Come back to us with it. I will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's just workshop it a bit first. <laughs> As opposed to how much uh, how much effort and I put in everything else. Exactly. There yeah. You. Yes. Scats maximum effort, as Deadpool, another great Canadian, would say. Ah. Also, Wolverine really? is Canadian. Mm hmm. All right. Okay, Hugh oh. Jackman is not Canadian, but Wolverine, the, the character, is, is Canadian. Oh. Deadpool, I don't believe, is, but Ryan Reynolds is. Therefore, they're yes. a match made in heaven. Yeah. And now that I've said Ryan Reynolds, Andrea needs a new couch. <laughs> I'm just super excited about Deadpool 3. Yes. The, these are my two man crushes. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if anybody ever had a hall pass, that either one of them. And moving on to someone who didn't make Andrea <laughs> Moist and wreck her couch, it's Gordon Lightfoot. <laughs> wow, you're the one bringing this train around. I'm impressed. I know, right? Yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> I'm usually I'm usually not at the known so, for conducting skills. But what, after I picked this this track, um, yeah. I looked at it briefly because I mean I just checked out to see who was in like where where uh, he had hit the Hall of Fame and if we can get a Canadian in here, mm -hmm. and we could. And I looked at it and I'm like, oh, there's not a lot of meat on this bone. And then I looked and then I looked a little deeper and whoo, it got meaty. So who wants to talk about the scandal? Uh, you know, in, in, or coincidentally, I actually was watching uh, the last 24 of John Belushi not that long ago. Ah, uh, yes, I was it's watching like, the uh, yeah. the um, dark side of comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I did not watch that in preparation. Uh, that was just happened to be a complete coincidence. Uh, so by this one, let's let's just go to who Gordy was before in, in 74. He was already an established performer. I believe mm -hmm. it is mid to early to mid thirties kind of yes. looked older than still looks old. He's 79 now still looks way older than he should be. But, I got to say though, in the mid seventies, the 30 to 40 year olds looked way older than they do now. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and the yeah. court, like everybody looked a solid decade to two decades older than they look now. Mm -hmm. Any case my dad what it was, at my age would have yeah he didn't look you'd be nice. grandpa like you're older yeah. than the golden girls right now oh my you should wow <laughs> that can't no wait a minute we, we checked this out and that's not true that's fun true. bit of no. golden girls trivia though uh betty white was older than sliced <laughs> bread yes it's true that's taking a second there kirk you okay yeah betty white Older than sliced bread. Kind of cool. Is that literal? It's literal. Hmm. Also, wasn't she older than Estelle, um, Estelle Getty? Getty? Yes, she no, was. Getty. Or was it B. Arthur that We're was older than Estelle Getty? We're stock again. <laughs> <laughs> this has happened before. We're not doing this again. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, Kirk, you amuse me. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
So back to Mr. Lightfoot. Back to Mr. Lightfoot. Lightfoot mm-hmm. already had, he already made his mark in the U.S. And that was not easy. Uh, Canadians back then mm-hmm. did not translate well across the border. No. So he was, Much like the Tragically Hip have never translated well across the border. Very, very poorly. Very, very poorly. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just didn't, it just didn't work. Gordon did. Uh, but very few Canadians were even given an opportunity. Well, I think it was because Gordon had the kind of mix of country folk and uh, easy listening that, I mean, all of his songs are easy on the ears. It's not a difficult listen. He's, he, yeah, he's got the country folk borderline rock thing going on for the time, but he's also up there like with contemporaries of John Denver and, and he Gordon Lightfoot is edgier he's just got a little bit more grit to him a little bit more depth than country rose like on my shoulder makes yeah me he's happy. he's a little bit a little bit more depth a little bit more grit than just the the lullaby soft folk pop that was out there at the time yeah because he was talking about you know in in this song here you know, it was, it wound up being like he was talking about infidelity. Oh, well, in so many ways. He was talking about infidelity, but he was more talking about a boot. Uh, there, there was a lot of, this was obsessive. Uh, this was violence. This was a man uncontrol who could not control himself. Well, here he is talking about sundown. You better take care. If I find you've been creeping around my back stairs. So he's possessive. Yeah. But you can also look at it from the point that, you know, Gordo was never really all that big into the whole monogamy thing. He well, was, this he song was, was about out. his mistress when he was very recently divorced. They had a three year affair. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, shortly after he and his wife divorced, which is, by the way, one of the most, at the time, I believe it was the most expensive divorce in Canadian history. Oh, wow. Um, I, I hope I hope uh, when Trudeau's uh, wife leaves him, that'll be the number that'll take that record. <laughs> well, I'm sure the record's been the way, taken by now, but at the time... I'm going to segue off now, because, hey, kids. So, Britta Olison. Uh, Britta Olison. His, his I'm not done carried. my segue. Okay. Hey, kids, Justin Trudeau's wife left her, left him two years ago. True story. All right, you done with your conspiracy theory? Not a conspiracy Let's get... theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. Look, they are not together and have not been for two years. I wonder who How's that drink, drink, Andrea? Tasty. <laughs> Not consistent, oh. and I'll tell you, Buckner versus Trudeau, book it. Yes, Buckner versus I've seen Trudeau. Trudeau. Hmm? Wait, it's Buckner versus Trudeau, or Buckner, Buckner versus Trudeau. Buckner versus Trudeau. Buckner versus Trudeau in the Buckner verse. Oh, ooh. there you go. Winner, winner gets the website. Kirk, Kirk thinks he could stand up to a trained boxer. Yeah. And Kirk has never boxed a day in his life. Justin Trudeau is not a trained boxer. No, of course. Sorry, he's not. No. No. What were were we ever thinking? The the years of training as a boxer have nothing to do with it. No, he's untrained. He's only trained for a like show. Yes. Yeah. Now you've come around to my way of thinking. I find it easier to agree with the crazy people. Let's get back to Gordo here. So what weren't we doing again? No Golden Girls. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> when it's the Nelson verse, then you can segue more often. <laughs> it doesn't have that ring to it, though, does it? I, I don't believe this was a segue. This was a tangent. Uh, it was a tangent because yes, it was there. I ran with it. Yes. Okay. I tangent. So let's okay. segue back to the topic and Rita. talk about infidelity. Britta Oliasson who was his wife at the time, um, wound up um, leaving him because of his infidelity, apparently. 
and Kathy Smith was the one who he was infideling with. Um, that being said, Kathy Smith has some backstory, being as though she was the one who wound up. Oh, you want to say it, Andrea? Do it. No, no. I just there's so much with Kathy Smith that's oh, just yeah. fun. Yeah. So she was the one who wound up giving John Belushi his fatal speedball, uh, cocaine and heroin. So she starts off way, way, way before this, before mm -hmm. she got together with Gordon Lightfoot. She was the, doing the rounds. She was doing the rounds. She was the original um, uh, groupie for the band. Yes. All and, of singer. and she uh, got pregnant Didn't know with who the been band's anyone. baby because nobody knows who the father is. Yep. Um, so this child was raised by the band, um, and that's an interesting board. The band broke up. Oh, um, that's a good question. That's I don't know. Question. But yeah, she was she was like backup singer. She was uh, the drug dealer. She was the gopher. Secretary. I believe her her IMDb bio says that she was a singer, drug dealer, groupie, and legal assistant they put drug dealer on the imdb <laughs> hey man maybe it was your wikipedia page i don't remember but okay, still. Yeah. put it on the resume man <laughs> man I, I gotta spice up my imd page imdb page. you do yeah, yeah. gotta work on that yeah. just don't don't start dealing drugs Interesting. that's not good at the you. at the end or later on in an interview he had said it. verbatim about kathy smith so lightfoot had actually said this about kathy smith Men were drawn to her, and she used to make me jealous. But I don't have a bad thing to say about her. Okay, so let's go back. She he wrote the song about her because he was insanely jealous, mm -hmm. and he said he wrote it based on he was. I guess he'd rented a farm and was had locked himself in to write an album. She was out with friends, and it was sunset, and he was literally just pouring out his emotions, which are, as you said, they're. I, I never really listened to the lyrics of this song. I just was like, oh, okay. It's kind of catchy. It's got a good beat. Mm -hmm. But he's just verse after verse talking about how she's beautiful and deadly and you better like not look at her because violence will ensue. Mm -hmm. And it's violence did ensue. Fucked up. And violence did ensue. He broke mm -hmm. her jaw at one point. Like they had a really tumultuous, violent relationship. But you know, like it, he was right to be that jealous because, but because, but he knew her past, you know. I don't yeah, think there's ever a right to be that jealous. First of all, I, if you love something and it cheats on you, set it free. Yeah, well, again, okay, I didn't say like a right isn't like a moral right, it's just like he was probably correct. Oh, yes, he was probably correct, and that's and that's what she was doing because this woman had an insatiable need that needed to be filled yes um and uh their uh panties were that brand it said, said insatiable need on them anyway um the uh the whole thing with that though is you know he knew who he was getting tangled up with i mean he was having an affair with her while he was still married so n there's no good guy here there are various shades of gray and some dipping into the black yeah there there's no good guy here um and he'll be the first to tell you that he was not the good guy mm -hmm. yeah and there's a lot of that in this song there's a lot of self-loathing in here mm -hmm. there is i mean there's even the what's the line about um when i what is it when i basically when he says it when he he's feeling better or when he's basically oh, when saying that when I get feeling good because I'm feeling no pain. Yeah. So basically saying he feels better when he's drinking or drinking or drugged or whatever. Drugs yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, this this girl is no saint. He's no saint. Mm -hmm. But there's. Well, as Brad said, if you're that jealous about something, don't be with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're that jealous about everyone, then you got issues. You maybe got to look inward. Yeah. So, I mean, he's he's tried the marriage game once more than I have. 
Um, and uh, is he still married now to his third wife? Yes, on his third yeah. wife. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, he, I watched so, that CBC documentary on him. Yeah. Yeah. And he seems to be doing well there. I mean, he's had a few health scares and what have you. And he's what eighty three now. Um. Oh crap! I had it in my other notes, but I, you know, he's he's in his uh, early eighties. Like he's looked frail for a long time. Uh, I remember when he performed at Live Eight mm-hmm. uh, in Toronto. I, I I didn't go do it, but I mean, just like watching that, it, it was man. He, he just looked like like a warm breeze could blow him over. Yeah, but he's lived a long, rough life, still living it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe he's still performing. But I mean, this is a guy who's got a great voice. I mean, he's up there with the legendary Canadians with great voices, along with Downey, along with Cohen, along with um, Neil. Tony Mitchell. Neil Young. No. <laughs> he was not on the list for a reason. We don't talk about Sad Tiny Tim. Sorry, I just wanted to tee that one up and see. What <laughs> nope, you oh, don't yeah. get that one through. No, if, if you put that baseball on that tee, I will. I'll, I'll, oh, I know. It, I know. Yeah. I was and on and the... T-ball is about as athletic as Brad gets. I'm pretty good at T-ball, all right. <laughs> so with that, uh, this was not his end. It was his only number one in the U.S. He did mm-hmm. have multiple number ones in Canada. Uh, my personal favorite uh, is the, the Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Yes. That is a great song, but it is four minutes too long. Oh, it's monotonous as hell. Like, I love the fact of telling the song, but did it have to do it with only four notes? But that allows me to do my impression. The ship on say, yeah. Over and over and mm-hmm. over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's still my favorite. It's still my favorite. Yeah. If you can Sundown was my favorite. Yeah. And um, why can't I think of the name? Carefree Highway? No, Carefree Highway was okay, but yeah. A little bit too much take your toaster for a swim music um but it was no it, oh gordon lightfoot did um I know what you're thinking of and i'm blanking on it too yeah because it's um well, can't you read my mind yes that <laughs> me, that's as soon as it came to me i'm like why can't you read my mind andrea if you that is uh, that my is my mind. favorite oh, are you sure you didn't set that up ahead of time that was no you that didn't one I did. all right what a tale my thoughts would tell. Uh, that that um, one I prefer. Like Elvis. Oh, you ain't another motor hound dog. By the way, the Elvis biopic is actually pretty good. Is it? Oh. I haven't checked it out yeah, yet. Yeah, he doesn't really look like Elvis, but you suspend disbelief very quickly. It's mm-hmm. it's well done. I recommend watching it. So do we have any final thoughts on Mr. Gordo? Um, all I can say is that another great Canadian export um you know and when you compare him to our most recent canadian exports i think um mr lightfoot comes out way ahead of the pack i mean at least he's not um spewing anti-semitism like drake yeah drake had a big fall from grace and then of course you know Drake's we're, been dumped by um, you, Adidas or Nike you, you, or whoever you, you, was. No, 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 you're thinking That's Kanye. Kanye. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking Kanye. Never mind. No, no, Drake, Drake. Oh, sorry. Drake trouble. just grooms little girls. That's. Yes. See, then that's much better. On a scale of one to what the hell, Kirk? <laughs> They're all no, crimes just, against they, humanity. I, I just wanted to be really happy that I was right. I didn't miss something that Drake apparently did. I didn't think. No, that's. Oh, you were right. I'm sorry. I was wrong. That's I won't admit that often, but I will admit it this okay. next time. It was Kanye, not Drake. Oh, yeah. Who's got next? I told you guys earlier that I hadn't come up with anyone, so one of you got to do it. That's got to be Kirk, then. What do you got in the chamber? Okay. Uh, I will give you a... I'll give you a choice. Oh. All right. So the choice is this Drecky song from the late 70s that I absolutely despised when I was a little kid. Or... Down for anything you despise. Or... 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 A song from a song from a 1980 film. The film film really stunk. Was it The Room? 1980. (laughs) Or 
a song that's sort of, that's very, very different uh, with its first half and second half in the late 60s. Mm. I'm going to go with the one that you despise. I am also going to go with the one you despise. Okay. Uh, that one, is, and I just heard it just today when I was taking the dogs out for a walk. Uh, just because like I'm over, like near, near, there's this restaurant where you can hear a whole lot of things. Uh, well, they're, they're just play it very loudly. It is Leo Sayer, You Make Me Feel Like Dancing. Oh. Ooh. You make me feel like dancing. I want to dance the night away. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll talk about why I really despised that back then. Still not fond of it, but I have a, a little bit more of an appreciation. Andrea, your homework is to find where this was going to be sung on something that we reference a lot and why the it's Muppets? perfectly... Down no. the Muppets? No, it's not the Muppets. Oh. No, but it's going to be leading into, leading into one of the most accurate quotes of all time. That's your homework. If, you, and if I choose to accept it? Oh, you're choosing to accept it. <laughs> this Zoom call will self-destruct. Yes. So with that, <laughs> hey. Hey, Kirk, did you write a book? Yes, I did. It's called Chavo Guerrero Instant Classic, discussing the late, great Chavo Guerrero Sr. and all his exploits in and out of the ring. Buy that now Ooh. on Amazon. Mm. I know. Sounds fun. Fantastic. And you know what? Christmas is coming up. Uh, yes. We don't talk about Christmas until Halloween has happened. Doesn't matter. We're talking about potentially ordering things online that might take a while to get here. So Good. all the wrestling fans in your life, go on Amazon right now and order it for them. Mm -hmm. I think it makes a much better Halloween. And then, party. oh, and a Thanksgiving present for those of you in the States. Yeah, yeah. Thanksgiving is a good time. To I, I think I think a wrestling book is perfect for Thanksgiving. Well, think about what you do to the turkey. You tie it all up. It's in like in a little hold and stuff. It's very similar to wrestling. And isn't, I mean, Thanksgiving is basically the football holiday in the States. It's like, let's yeah. celebrate all things football. Yeah, well, yeah. you know what? If maybe they're more into wrestling than football, just give them the book. And then be like, yeah, you go read this while the rest of us watch football. Ah, well, see, well, all, what else I'm Thanksgiving for? Huh? Do you tell. What's that? Shows, my other shows. Hey. What, you've been cheating on us again? Oh, yeah. What is your Gordon I think, Lightfoot? I think, we're, I think we're the side piece, Brad. Oh. The thruple doesn't always do it for me. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> But Chris Bernay and I, we have just, uh, it's now up on the site uh, where we looked at Manimal. And this crap was on national television. And we've picked something for our next uh, show. It's going to be Battle of the Network Stars, episode 12. Oh, my goodness. Remember Battle of the Network Stars. I'd never actually watched it, but I went back and I saw some clips. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, it's weird. It's actually one where we're going to be sort of enjoying it usually every time we do one of these, Chris and I just like, why are we doing this to ourselves? <laughs> Manimal was just so bad. Oh, God. oh, and it does not hold up, does it? It didn't hold up then. No, it had one season. Uh, I don't even think it completed the season. No, I think it had, what, six episodes? Something like that. Yeah, it's amazingly, though, the people in it all probably had big, we, as I mentioned, probably all had like decent sized homes because of their acting, acting career, which is- It was, it was a cool concept of a show. The CG was not um, <laughs> at a level that could even beat Lady Hawk. It wasn't even good for 1983. No, no, it certainly wasn't. I got to tune in and watch you guys riff on that one. Oh, yeah. So check that out. Uh, there's always the weekly Hall of Fame show with Evan Nolan and I on November 9th. If you're a big football fan, do you want to be part of our mock pro football Hall of Fame committee? I know Brad said he couldn't make it. So if you're hoping to see. I, I couldn't. I was um, brushing my oven that day. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrea, too, apparently. So, yeah, it's the day I bleach my asshole. You know, Andrea, I've said before, in polite company, we call that changing your ringtone. <laughs> I just like how you broke Buckner on that one. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm I'm kind of speechless because I, 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 a, I've got no comeback. B, I'm just trying to think of all the pervy people who are really getting turned on right now. Um, <laughs> Brad's yeah. found his people. Uh, I'm, I'm almost like people. Almost. 
I mean, you're a Muppet. You're a clothes facsimile. <laughs> ah, then there's it's also time to get things started. All right. Yeah. Now I think we're going to get things finished. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening here? Oh, um, well, we started off by going off the rails and we just continued to go off the rails. So now it's not so much as a train as an ATV plowing through the brush. <sighs> All right. So not in hallandfame.com. Not in hallandfame.com. <laughs> wherever you are, wherever you may be, I hope you've got a clean butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>